Hi, my name is Amir Tatayevi, an assistant officer of biomedical engineering. And in this series, we talk about physiological systems in biomedical Due to the presence of different types of ions in the intracellular space compared to the extracellular space, there is always a transmembrane potential or transmembrane voltage. For example, there are usually more sodium ions in the extracellular space than the intracellular space. Or there are more potassium ions in the intracellular space compared to the extracellular space. A sudden and fast change in the membrane potential is called an action potential. And today we want to talk about action potentials in more details. But before we get to that point, let's talk about some of the important components of the cell membrane. Specifically, there are some proteins in the cell membrane that facilitate with the transport of ions across the membrane. Here you see an example of a sodium channel, a potassium channel, and a sodium-potassium pump. A sodium channel and a potassium channel facilitate the transport of sodium ions and potassium ions across the membrane. And a sodium-potassium pump facilitate the transport of both of these two ions across the membrane. But there is a major difference between a sodium potassium pump and the other two types of channels, sodium channel and potassium channel. These two channels help with passive transport of ions or moving in the direction of the diffusion gradient. For example, moving the sodium ions from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. In the extracellular space, there are more sodium ions in the intracellular space, less sodium ions. So moving them from the space with a higher concentration of sodium ions to the space with a lower concentration of sodium ions. In this case, since we are dealing with ions, diffusion gradient depends on both mass gradient as well as the charge gradient. On the other hand, sodium-potassium pump help with active transport of ions, moving the ions against the diffusion gradient. For example, moving sodium ions from the intracellular space where we have less sodium ions to the extracellular space where we have more sodium ions. So here you see just a picture where shows sodium ions more in the extracellular space and then potassium ions more in the intracellular space. If we plot the membrane potential when a cell is in its resting condition, then the membrane potential at that condition, in that condition, is minus 70 milliwatt. It is called resting potential. Now, if due to some stimulations, the membrane potential rises from minus 70 to something around minus 55 or minus 50, the sodium channels, which are voltage-gated channels, they open. So what does that mean, that it is a voltage-gated channel? It means that if the voltage across a sodium channel exceeds a threshold, a potential threshold, then the sodium channels open. In this case, for example, the membrane potential rises from minus 70 to minus 50. Therefore, the sodium channel, the sodium channels open. Now, the sodium ions can flow from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. And remember that sodium ions have positive charges. So we have a flow of positive charges from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. 
This increases the membrane potential from minus 50, for example, to minus 30. At this point, the potassium channels that are voltage-gated channels as well, they open. And due to this, both the sodium channels and potassium channels at this point, they are open and there is a flow of potassium ions from the intracellular space to the extracellular space and a flow of sodium ions from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. Due to these tr transactions, the membrane potential reaches somewhere around plus 30 millivolt. At this point, some segments called inactivating segments block the sodium channels. So although the sodium channels are open, but they are blocked. So no more sodium ions can move from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. But the potassium channels are still open. And therefore, more potassium ions can move from the intracellular space to the extracellular space, which is more positive charges from the intracellular space to the extracellular space. And therefore, the membrane potential falls from plus 30 to minus 70. And because of that, both sodium channels and potassium channels close. Now, if you look at the membrane potential graph that we have here, the membrane potential went even below the resting potential, which was minus 70 millivolts. Here, the, the sodium potassium pumps help the cell membrane to get back to its resting potential. So a sodium potassium pump has three spots for sodium ions and two spots for potassium ions. So transporting three sodium ions from the intracellular space to the extracellular space and two potassium ions every time from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. Continuing this process, the membrane potential again goes back to minus 70 millivolts, which was the resting potential. And the cell again gets ready for the next action potential. An action potential has three different phases as we discussed in this video. So there is a resting potential and then depolarization during which the membrane potential rises from the resting potential to somewhere around plus 30 millivolts and then repolarization where the membrane potential goes from plus 30 to a little bit lower than minus 70 millivolts. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until the next one, bye.